Saturday, which is, it's like my biggest workout in terms of the, the most work that I do. It's kind of the end of the week one. Um, so it, it's a pretty heavy workout, a long one. And so as I'm finishing that video up, my fiance comes driving up, you know, cause we had plans last Saturday, um, to go out of town, have the day together. And she was out running some errands and I talked about, you know, the, the challenge of managing like health and fitness, my health and fitness and physique goals with family, like work, family, school, right? It's kind of like these two different worlds that I've got and they are not uh, always compatible with each other. And one of the biggest challenges has been like balancing that and managing those things uh, because they're both very important. And so back to last week, so Cheryl drives up and she she wasn't happy she was pissed because i was supposed to have been ready to go you know i looked at the clock and that was the time that we had agreed on you know being ready to go and i'm still like doing a workout and um you know that that led to a big argument we had a big argument and it just like ruined the whole day um but it was really you know a, a real true example of how this happens you know and i've known this to happen like this, this is very similar to a lot of clients i have worked with in the past where i was either working with the husbands or i was working with the wives who were you know trying to achieve their health and fitness goals and the rest of the family wasn't. So if the wife was doing it, the husband wasn't doing it, the kids weren't doing it or vice versa, you know, and it was tough. It, it was very challenging for them. And I can understand that because, you know, this is the same thing that happened when, you know, it's like the, the, you're, you're the only one who's, who's doing this and the rest of the family's not. The kids aren't doing this, the kids aren't eating healthy foods that you're eating. They're not on your diet plan, your meal plan. They're not doing your workouts, right? Your spouse isn't doing that shit either, right? You know, and so there's this, um, there can be this like division in a way, um, which a lot of times is what happens is, you know, it, it, it's almost like there's this division in the household to an extent. Um, and it can affect relationships as well. Like it, it, it can just start to, there can be resentments that build, frustration that builds, right? Anger, um, all of that stuff. And, you know, the, and, and that's a very real thing that can happen. So, you know, back to last week, you know, it was, it was really on me because I should have managed my time better. You know, it really wasn't that a, a problem that I'm working out or I'm, I'm trying to achieve, you know, health and fitness goals and physique goals that I'm doing here. Um, or doing a body transformation, but it was really, you know, for, to her, it felt like I was not respectful of our time together, right? So, you know, what I've discovered, and this has been through, you know, 25 years of working with clients who had the same issues and even myself going through this is, you know, if you're going through any kind of a body transformation, whether it's a body transformation journey, whether it's just you're, you're trying to get healthy, you're trying to get in shape, whatever it might be. If you have health, fitness, physique type goals, um, and 
you know, that the rest of your family doesn't. They don't share that with you. I think there's three key things uh, to, to help be able to manage, you know, health, fitness, physique with family um, and, and life stuff, even work, you know. Uh, and that is, well, particularly family, I would say, you know, and I think the first thing is obviously communication, you know. It's the most important thing that, that we're not going on a body transformation journey or we're, we're trying to change our diet or all of a sudden you start working out and going to the gym, but you're not communicating with your spouse or your family about what you're doing. You know, you just start doing it and, you know, to them, especially if it's a big commitment, you know, and it starts to take a lot more of your time. Um, it's taking a lot of your focus and, and things like that, right? You're devoting all of this time, effort, and energy to it. And, you know, if, if there's no communication with your family about what you're doing, uh, and more importantly, like why you're doing it, it can lead to that, you know, it can actually really harm relationships, you know, um, for the reasons that I talked about earlier, my own example last week. So I think communication is a key thing, right? Letting your family know, sitting down with them and, and just saying, hey, look, this is, this is what I'm doing and this is why I'm doing it. This is why it's important. This is why I need to do it. Um, you know, this was actually the one thing I did do right <laughs> before I did this journey, um, you know, was communicating that. I was very clear with Cheryl about, look, this is what I need to do. You know, I had some serious health issues going on. I had, um, you know, issues with my digestive system and gut health. I had some issues uh, that, that were deeper than that, you know? And I felt like I needed to do this really to save my life, that this was a big thing. If I didn't do it, I felt like I wasn't gonna be around um, as long as I would like to. And so that communication was huge. Um, the second thing is, uh, was being clear on expectations, you know? So it's one thing to communicate what you're doing, why you're doing it, but I think it's, the next thing that's the most important is, is uh, being clear about what the expectations are because even when you communicate with your family about what you're doing, what they expect, what they think it looks like compared to what you think it looks like might be completely different. You know, you might be thinking, this is great, they understand and everything, but your vision of what it's gonna take and what you're gonna be doing and all that might be very different from what they imagine. And if that happens and there's different levels of expectations going on, that's a tough time because then that leads back to the same thing where it's just like resentments and anger and hostility, all this stuff starts to happen, right? Um, and again, you know, it hurts the relationship. So managing expectations was another one. Um, and then I think the other thing is like teamwork, you know, making sure that everybody's on the same page, um, you know, you've communicated, you've set the expectations, everybody's clear on it, everybody's cool with it, but that there's also this teamwork involved. And that doesn't mean that they're cooking your meals for you or they're doing, you know, all this to make to make your goals happen. Um, they're doing it for you, but it there it's not like they're taking care of your responsibilities is what I'm trying to say, but it's more that they're supporting you. You have a support system. And I think, you know, that's part of the communication and the expectations thing is being clear on, hey guys, you know, it would mean the world to me if I had your support, you know, so that they know their support, their encouragement, um, you know, or if there's, maybe there are ways that, that they can help you out if you're having a tough time, if you're working long hours, you know, you got long days at work or you're commuting long distances or, you know, you, you know, you're really tired, you just don't have a lot of time, you have deadlines to meet and projects and meetings and, you know, lunches with clients or things like that that are happening, you know, and, and maybe there are some little ways that they can help you out and in return, maybe there's some ways that you can help them out, right? But that is just a teamwork thing that I think, um, I think those are three very valuable things. So communication, uh, being clear on expectations, and then, you know, teamwork, having a, a, a good support environment. So. You know, uh, we worked everything out after last week, Cheryl and I did, but it really reinforced that to me, the importance of that. You know, I didn't communicate to her last weekend that, hey, um, I got a later start than normal on my workout. Hey, this is gonna take me a little bit longer than I, you know, told you. Like if I would have said any of that stuff ahead of time and let her know, it would have, 
It would have increased the communication between us both. It would have let her know that I wasn't being disrespectful of our time together, but that I was actually being respectful because I was, I was communicating with her and I was you know, um, kind of resetting some of the expectations for that day and you know, letting her know in a way that you know, I, I kind of need your support with this, right? And, you know, so some teamwork going on in there. So, you know, fortunately we, we worked that out, but again, it's just reminding me so of, of how, how important that is. You know, a body transformation journey, it's, it's not just about ourselves and what we're going through, especially, you know, if you've got family, if you've got a significant other or a spouse, man, you know, it's about them too, because what we're doing for us affects them as well. It takes time you know, away from them to some degree. It takes our energy and our attention to some degree away from them because we have to. We have to have that, that extra time to focus on ourselves and our health because if we don't, who's gonna take care of them if we're not around if something happens to us? Who's gonna be there to provide for them? You know, Who's gonna be there to watch them grow up? Who's gonna be there to support them, right? That type of stuff. talking this morning I was talking I was writing a post this morning on social media and I was reflecting back about you know about 15 years ago and uh, how you know this body transformation that I'm on uh, it was a lot different 15 years ago you know doing something like this uh, wouldn't have been possible or I would have been I would have really struggled because there were so many things I wasn't able to do because I was always in pain. I had back pain, I had a shoulder injury going on and problems with that. I had uh, knee problems, so squatting um, and lunging would just kill my knees. Um, you know, anything pressing in this stuff would mess my shoulder up, my back was always flared up from like deadlifting and things like that. So, you know, there was, I, I just remember like trying everything with different rehab exercises and physical therapy type stuff and stretching and ice and heat and you know I'd seen doctors and got chiropractic work done massage therapy and just you know pain medications at one point I was just trying everything under the sun and nothing was really working and I, I remember thinking you know like is this how my life's gonna be like feeling like this was just something I was gonna have to learn to deal with as I got older and um, so now, you know, coming this far, you know, and now being 15 years, quote unquote, older at a time when, you know, we're, we're, we're always made to believe and we're always told, you know, that things get worse as we get older. You know, we can't do the same things that we used to do when we were younger. We have to slow down. We have to, you know, uh, be careful. We're going to injure ourselves and, you know, all these these are just like beliefs um, or that, that become these ideas and, and these things we're told that, be, that, that we adopt, I think, a lot of times as beliefs, as fact. Um, and it could seem very real. Like when I was going through this stuff with pain and everything years ago, it seemed very real. Like this is just the way my life was going to be. The problem was that, you know, the methods I was trying, like most conventional methods, they don't really... Um, deal with pain at the root cause, meaning above the neck, right? The brain and nervous system are actually where pain resides in the body. That's the trigger and driver of pain, you know, but what treatments and, and, and methods and, you know, medicine deals with that? There's not really anything that does, um, you know? So it was like once I kind of got the right tools in place, it was amazing to, to 
see and feel what the difference was. You know, at 52 years old now, I'm able to do the things that I used to be able to do when I was in my 30s or my 20s. You know, I might be a little slower. You know, I might have to take longer maybe to warm up. Um, it might take me a little longer to recover, right? Yeah, those things, you know, I have to be more diligent with my nutrition. You know, I, I can't get away with eating the same crap I did back then and perform my best. I just, you know, I have to be a little smarter and more diligent with these things, but I can still do the things that I used to do. So, you know, I don't buy into that whole, you know, we can't do things because we get older or as we get older, you know, we get worse, you know, pain and injuries are just something we have to deal with, you know, and it's, you know, I've just learned that it, it's a lot different um, and that doesn't have to be the case. All right, another workout done. This is, this is my last one for Saturday. This was the big one. And um, so just wanted to share what my results look like for this week. This is Saturday's results day. And, um, you know, so despite, you know, some of the challenges with this week, you know, it was a challenge being consistent um, and, and staying consistent through the week. You know, I really had to prioritize some things, put some things in place to make that happen. But, you know, on the flip side of that, it was well worth the effort. You know, I um, am down another... 1.2 pounds this week. That was that's a pretty big drop for me. Usually I'm around a half a pound or so, um, and my skin folds. I'm so glad that I did skin fold measurements last week. Um, I started doing that, uh, and you know the reason why uh, I'll say that is because it just gives me another way to measure you know results when some things might not appear to be changing so much. You know, there's different things we could see. Sometimes the, the weight on the scale doesn't change a whole lot at all, but my tape measurements will change, you know, or um, like this week, you know, my tape measurement changed a bit, but it was like not, my, my stomach measurement went down a quarter inch. So that's typical, you know, week to week. Um, I'm, you know, definitely on that. But my, so I do like my lower abdominal, which is like around the belly button area, right? Spare tire area. And that's where, you know, most of us guys carry most of our weight. Um, but I also do the upper abdominal, which is really where our waist is. So it's like a, you know, a few inches above the belly button. And that dropped three quarters of an inch this week. So my waist was down three quarters of an inch. It was a huge drop. I had to remeasure it to make sure that I got it right. Um, and then, you know, on top of that, when I looked at the skin folds, my skin folds had dropped pretty good. So um, it, it's a pretty significant drop on skin folds, you know, for one week. So all in all, it was a really big win. I'm feeling really good, um, you know, this week. And it, it just was a big success. So I'm definitely happy with those results. And um, so I just wanted to share that. And uh, not sure if I'll post the pictures or not this week. Um, there are some differences. Maybe I will because I've been doing it week to week. It's just, you know, the changes week to week, I can see them, but they're, they're so very subtle, you know. They're not anything that um, is going to wow your mind. But if you look back at some of my previous, um, you know, update videos, you know, go way back to like the first one I did was probably like week four on this. Well, I didn't even post results. So I got to go back um, and look at like the first week or the first video that I that I showed my results. It might have been like around my two month mark. So it might be the week eight, week nine video somewhere in there. Um, but anyway, you can check those out and just kind of compare the differences because it, it's pretty significant when I look that far back. But anyway, so I'm gonna enjoy the, the rest of this day. And um, you know, in the meantime, I will be uh, back next week with another update and tomorrow I'll be back on track. But today, I think we're going to take the kiddos out and we're going to enjoy some uh, Korean uh, food tonight for dinner. I can't wait. So um, that's a wrap for today and uh, I will catch you next time in the next video.